Hi, everybody. Hi, Hannah. Hi, George. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Lila. Hi, Doreen. Hi. Hello. Hello. How's everybody? Good. Hi, Gary. Hello. Hello. All right. So we're waiting for Lori still to call in. Yes, but. Okay. All right. And Terry, can Terry still not hear us? She can hear you. We can't hear her. She can hear us. We can't oh, okay. hear her. Other way around. Got it. All right. We'll, we'll give, do you want to give it a minute while we yeah. work through this? As Brooke mentioned, um, this is being recorded and the recording will be posted to the internet um, as it's considered the meeting minutes in addition to what George is going to record. So I think you can probably see in the upper right hand of your screen, the little red REC. So that's how you know you are being recorded at this meeting. So we'll give it a, another minute for technical troubleshooting and then we can get started. Gary, is there anything more I can do? For which one? For Lori? For Lori? Um, she might have to just call back through and maybe through Martha's phone. Phone, and that would count. Um, we just need to document that she is, in fact, just for the recording purposes, just have her state her name or, and her address, just if we have to do it that way, just so we can. Um, prove that she was there in case the question comes up. Okay. I texted her to ask if there was she had any luck and I haven't she hasn't read. Gary, what's your advice for Terry to help her get on so we can hear her for voting? Yep. So <laughs> if push now? No, we can't. So Terry, what you may have to do, um, if you look at the invitation, it, it's quite possible your computer might not have a microphone that's set up. Okay. Oh, oh we can hear No, her. we can hear you. You're good. Okay. Turn the volume up. Oh my God. <laughs> I know what I did. I was playing around with stuff. <laughs> we can hear you. Oh, now. Can you hear me? It's yeah. very soft, but we can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Lori may be coming. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's Lori. Lori, can you hear us? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then I think we are um, good to get started. So um, I'm just going to start by taking a roll call so we can just document who is here. Um, just answer by saying present. Martha? She's on mute. It's <laughs> present. Okay. Hannah? Present. Okay. Terry? Present. George? Present. Lila? Present. Lori? Present. Okay. Do I have Peter? Okay. Don't. And Mary Frazier? Okay, and I know we had, um, I'm here, Dorian is here, <coughs> and our special guests are town manager Gary Evans, and of course, our liaison, Amy Moran Bella. Um, and of course, as always, Brooke Berry, our director. Did I miss anybody? Okay, even better. All right, so I just wanna, I said this um, before everyone had joined, but um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, the recording um, will be posted to the internet. Um, it is considered part of the meeting minutes in addition to what George um, records. Um, so just, you know, be aware of that. You can also see in the upper right, or you should be able to see in the upper right hand corner, um, a little record kind of red button um, that, you know, reminds you that we're being recorded. So, all right. Um, with that, our first um, agenda item is public comment. And Brooke, is there anyone in the queue for public comment? Not that I see, nor did I get any written comments via the email account that was posted. Okay. So I don't right. see anybody right now. Okay. So then um, we're going to move on from that. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? All right. 
I don't see any, so very good. We'll keep moving here. Um, friends of the library, nothing from Carolyn at all, Brooke? No, uh, she's emailing um, the friends, but yeah, no. Yeah, I did see an email from her yesterday. She's doing well, um, which is great news, but um, you know, have not, um, have not received anything from her about the friends, so. Um, all right, three minutes and three agenda items down, so that's awesome. Um, Amy, Town Council Liaison Report. Okay, um, we've now had two Town Council meetings virtually. The first one was a lengthy meeting. It lasted till after 10 o'clock at night. Um, it was mostly maintenance items. We, um, we accepted sub-registrars. We authorized the town manager to accept a couple of grants. Um, and we passed some, we uh, passed some bid awards for sidewalks and street sweeping at the first meeting. Our second meeting had only um, one item on the agenda, and that was um, an executive order from the governor's office concerning um, our taxes in town. And we had the option to defer taxes or do a low interest rate tax program. And the governor said that the um, towns had to choose one of the programs for the residents. We are offering um, residents uh, they can pay their taxes up to 90 days late at a reduced tax rate. Um, and that was all of the discussions at the, all of the action items at the two town council meetings, both council meetings. We had updates on COVID-19 and we had updates on our budget process. Um, the public hearing on the budget is Monday, May 4th. I encourage everybody on the library board to sign up and to speak at that meeting. Um, the meeting begins at seven o'clock with a presentation by the town manager followed by a presentation from the Board of Ed. And I think it is very important that during this budget cycle, um, members of the public come out and speak and advocate for what is important to you. Um, it is a tough budget session and um, I think coronavirus is making it even more difficult because there's going to be needs that we can't anticipate and there could be expenses that we don't know about and we're not sure about state revenue coming in. So I think there's a lot, a lot of moving pieces and I think it's important that all of you speak in favor of the library budget and explain why it's reasonable and that what reductions would actually do to the library budget. So mm -hmm. that's all I have to say. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Amy. And Brooke's going to talk um, in her report about the budget and kind of where we stand with that. Um, so as far as, as the chairman's report, um, Amy mentioned the budget hearing that is Monday, May 4th. So this coming Monday, and it's hard to keep all these days straight. They're all kind of the same, but the next Monday on the calendar is the budget hearing um, at seven o'clock and it will be via Zoom. Um, there is information on the town website and Brooke, I think maybe you can just provide that to the library board, send that out. Yes. Or send a link out. Um, so as Amy said, you know, we do want to make sure people call in and advocate for the library. Um, and also, you know, if you can reach out to any of the friends, I will um, I'll circle back to Carolyn um, and a few others to see if, if they can either call in or, or write. Um, Carolyn in the past has been a, a big library supporter, of course. Um, not sure her familiarity, you know, um, with Zoom versus calling in, but we can definitely um, look to get her on the record because she's a great advocate for us. Um, but, you know, any of your friends, anyone who uses the library you know, um, and could speak as an advocate for it would be appreciated. Um, the second date for your calendars is um, Thursday, May 7th. So not this Thursday, but next Thursday um, at six o'clock again via a Zoom meeting um, is when the library does the, their, our budget presentation to the town council regarding the proposed budget. This is the one that's usually at Pitkin um, and, you know, Brooke does the presentation and we all sit in support. So this is, this will obviously be done virtually at this time. Um, Brooke will need to know later this week who is planning to attend that virtual meeting on the 7th because she'll need to forward the email addresses, um, you know, for the invite um, there. So Brooke, when do you need to know? I mean, you said end of week, but Thursday, Friday, or what's your preference? Um, the sooner the better, if you know that you can make it for next Thursday. Um, but if it's the end of the week, that should be fine. It's for me to give the names to Gary or the email addresses to Gary 
so that he can formally include you guys as part of the the zoom invite um as opposed to just a member of the public um so yeah okay all right so as soon as possible or no later than than this friday um to let brooke know if you were able to attend that virtual meeting um obviously not much not much nothing going on in person to, to just want to draw your attention to some of the virtual library events um if you're on facebook um, the Weathersfield Library link um, I saw earlier, um, the bedtime story um, was out there with Miss Ellen. Um, there are some virtual programs that are happening um, and, you know, as always, answering questions as needed. So there are things and programs that continue to happen in the library, even though the physical space itself is, is closed. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at, at some of that as well. Um, all right, that's what I have. Um, all right, Brooke, so you're up for the library director report. Okay. So you've all received the summaries that I've been sending over the past month. Um, and so I want to, I've kind of tried to break it down a little bit in the same format for the director's report. Um, but the COVID update is communication. I'm still working really hard to communicate with all of our stakeholders. Um, it feels like a near impossible task um, and there's not enough hours in the day. Um, but we're doing the best we can on, on communicating with everyone and keeping everybody up to date as much as possible. The timeline, there still is no timeline um, from your last update as to when the library might even reopen. I, in my heart of hearts, I would love to say June 1st. I don't know that that's a reality, um, but I'm still trying to be optimistic. Um, but that's, that's where we're at. So definitely may, I don't anticipate that we would be reopening. And when we do reopen, it will be a soft opening, um, very controlled. Um, and so, uh, trying to put a plan in place for what reopening would look like, like there will be no chairs for anybody to sit down, <laughs> um, to keep people moving, get their stuff and get out of the building so that more people can come in. Um, normally we have say 400 people a day or 500 people on a day on average, we are expecting that to increase dramatically as the economy has gone down. People are going to need access to our computers um, and resources. Um, and so we're, when the economy goes down, um, library usage dramatically increases. So um, trying to prepare for that and to help as many people as we possibly can um, but keeping everybody safe. Um, the book drop currently remains open. The last couple days we started checking in things. Uh, we've been having things in a 28 day quarantine, which is probably a couple weeks longer than it needs to be. Um, but just to be on the safe side, we are disinfecting those materials um, once they've been in the quarantine and then we're reshelving them. So um, we just checked in the materials that were returned at the end of March. Um, Cleaning on uh, Saturday, April 18th, the library was thoroughly cleaned once again by custodians from the uh, town's physical services department. Um, and so I think we're looking in good shape. In addition, we have our contracted custodial service that's still cleaning the library um, after the library staff or what library staff we do have working in the facility, which isn't too many. Um, after they leave for the day, they come in and, and do a, a cleaning. Um, our we have uh, new guidelines that were put forth by town hall for entrance to town hall and the library um, it includes uh, taking the temperature when anyone enters that building that includes like our delivery services that may come in um, everybody is required to wear a face mask face masks are provided to staff um, and, and and they're also provided with gloves um, hand sanitizer <laughs> disinfectant spray um, i've spent we have an illustration of the face. Oh, mask. there's an example. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> That's really nice. Um, good job. Uh, so we, you know, just are spending money on disinfectant wipes and Clorox and, and whatnot, just trying to keep and trying to do safe, safe social distancing. Um, so that's kind of what's been going on. In addition, since beginning of April, um, we have been tracking everyone who enters the library facility as well. Town Hall has been doing who's ever entered Town Hall. Like I'm in every day in Town Hall. 
Um, so I note that on a Google spreadsheet. Um, as, so if my staff enter town hall to drop off mail or anything, we, they have to notify me and we notify the town manager's office uh, through a Google spreadsheet. So we're tracking, that's very important for tracking purposes if you know, anybody gets it that we can attempt to do some tracing of some sort. Um, uh, emergency operations I have and will continue to attend on behalf of the library um, on, fr on the day after, uh, on Friday, uh, on the Friday, I did review um, after the meeting, I did review with um, Charlie Brown, the head of the Central Connecticut Health District, um, if the practices I was implementing within the library were good, the preventative measures we were taking place, um, you know, frequent hand washing, using gloves, social distancing, not coming to work sick, frequent hand washing. Um, were we engaging in appropriate practices? Was there anything more I could do in a 30,000 square foot building knowing that I have less than 10 humans in here at any given time? Um, and he didn't have anything further to add. Um, so I think we're doing pretty well. Um, and we've, we're starting to have staff work uh, remotely. So right now I have seven people working remotely. It's soon on Thursday will be eight people, but that's going to probably be about it. We've had some equipment issues um, and then there's some work that just can't be performed outside of the facility by certain staff. It just isn't going to happen. And so, um, but for the most part, we've tried to really reduce the number of people in here. Um, it just, just for safety purposes. Um, deliveries, we continue to receive deliveries from the FedEx, UPS, um, uh, the Postal Service. Um, however, some vendors are no longer shipping um, materials as they have closed down their warehouses. Um, and it's not the worst time of year for us, but we're able to switch over to our online resources um, because this is the time of year that we start to wrap up our spending on print resources looking to close out the fiscal year anyway and approach the, the, the upcoming fiscal year. So the timing isn't, I mean, it's always bad, but like, it's, you know, the timing is the timing. So it kind of works a little bit in our favor, but we're shifting uh, funding from print to um, our online resources to further enhance those. Um, deliver it, the state library's delivery system may resume if we were to give them a key to our building or an outside bin or shed, which this isn't gonna happen. We're not gonna give them access. They wanna make deliveries at 3 a.m. in the morning. This is not happening. Um, so we're not able to do those um, options at this time. Um, so it is what it is. So we'll continue to work with them to see if we can come up with a resolution, but so far we have not been able to come up with a resolution. The library's supplemental delivery system, they still come once a week. We check their temperature, they're wearing a mask, they pop in, they pop out. It's like less than a minute that they're here. Um, and that's worked very well. Um, our due dates, as I've said before, um, have extended now to June 30th. Fines are going to be waived. Um, this will affect uh, revenue that we give to the town. Um, so that will be impacted um, a little bit. Uh, so, and we will continue to waive fines um, at this point in time. Um, library cards, um, we've had several people sign up for a temporary library card, which is good through the end of June if they're Weathersfield residents. Um, and they've been able to access our um, wealth of online resources, which is great. Um, as far as online, use, uh, online resources, our usage is indeed up. I'm still waiting for the last few days of April so I can get the April statistics um, nailed down. Um, but Hoopla is through the roof. It costs money, um, which is why I have an ask later uh, in the meeting. Um, but when we continue to push out our online resources, either through the library's website or through Constant Contact, um, and we're very excited to have, uh, last week we finalized agreements with Creative Bug um, and Acorn TV. Um, so that will be promoted coming up and I hope to have them in place at the end of the week. Um, we'll see. Um, but we're hoping to launch those two um, resources coming up. Um, staff has started. Mark, what is that? Um, you what is Acorn TV and Creative? It's, it's a lot of uh, British uh, television kind of stuff. And so Weathersfield, we have quite a collection that circulates very heavily in-house right now that can't go out. Um, and so providing an online version of that 
um, a streaming service to provide that. Um, and people can access that whole, all the content that's on there for free. Yeah, so, um, and Creative Bug is by Joanne Fabrics, actually. Um, and so that's curated uh, crafting kind of program. So we've been looking at Creative Bug for a while. Um, and so it was a, a good time to uh, pull the trigger on that. So that worked out. Um, does that answer your question, Martha? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Very yeah, very excited about those two. Um, we continue to add content to OverDrive, um, put money into Hoopla um, and the other resources as well. So it just, it's a lot of money though. Um, staff has started rolling out their online programs. Um, Ellen posted her bedtime story time at four. We decided four o'clock would be a good time for Facebook, um, for, for that to be accessed on Facebook. Um, and so she, she did that. It was really, really cute. Bath time was tonight. <laughs> um, and tomorrow night, Elizabeth is actually hosting a cut the cord, uh, uh, cut the cord program. Uh, Elizabeth's one of our managers and that would be via Zoom. So if you wanted to uh, remove, that's always something, should I, is there something better than cable is a different streaming service and she'll be uh, walking people through that. Um, so we have a huge registration for that already. Um, so that's, that's happening. Um, and so, and then there's a, a store, a book discussion the following week. Um, and we'll just continue to push out our programming just in a virtual setting. So, um, yeah. So any questions about any of that so far? Yeah. Yes, Amy. Can I ask you a question about, um, so your online programming, do you have a schedule somewhere like that bedtime story today? Is that something that will happen every night or every it's Tuesday? It's going to happen Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays okay. at four o'clock. They're going to post it at four o'clock. So it's there um, when people, and it'll stay on the Facebook. So if you miss one, you could go back um, okay. next Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday will be another, but then we'll have six total right. on the Facebook. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's good to, to tell yeah. people that, you know, it'll be three times a week. There'll be these story hours. Mm -hmm. And will they always be pushed out at the same time? Yes. We're trying to post them at the same time. Um, and, and, and so that's, yeah, that's something that we are trying to be consistent of when we're posting it. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're having Wednesday evening programs, uh, one book discussion, and then the cut the program or, or cut the cord is Wednesdays, I believe. Um, and then we're having uh, the nutmegs are coming out May 1st. And so we're going to have quick book talks for the nutmegs uh, for the entire month of May. Um, and we're starting with the elementary school and then we'll do the middle school ones. Um, and we should be highlighting a couple books, probably twice, at least twice a week of the nutmeg books of which we've purchased uh, extra copies in our overdrive um, to make sure that we have access to that. I mean, we have the print ready to go out the door. Um, so, but that there's an online ebook and if it's available as audiobook as well. We're Fantastic. Yeah, Thank you. very excited about those. Um, great. I, I just, I just want to say kudos like that. We always talk about how we are online that the library is open 24 hours a day because of our online yeah. resources, but that like the flexibility and your responsiveness to the crisis. That's, that's great. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. I'll let, I'll be sure to share that with the staff. They've been quite quick to respond to that. Yeah. Um, the staff, uh, in addition, as I've said before, or I've, I've communicated before, the staff, in addition to being scared, um, everybody at this point, as everyone in society is, is flat out exhausted. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the, the status of where we are. Um, I've already provided you with updates um, previously regarding the staff schedules, um, but looking towards the future, if we continue to be closed for a continued period of time, um, I will need to consider furloughing or laying off the part-time non-union staff. Um, at the moment, I still have work for them to do. Um, some have removed themselves from the situation and we're really trying to keep the schedule uh, a bare skeletal staff. Um, it, but eventually the work that I have within the facility um, will, the projects will diminish. Um, uh, but right now, if they, if the part-time non-union staff 
are not working. They do not get paid. Therefore, we are not expending as much as we normally would um, on the part-time non-union payroll. Um, so that I just wanted to, you know, at some point in time when I've run out of projects, we may have to look at that scenario. And so, um, which I take very, very seriously. Um, but right now we do have work, but some people have just removed themselves from the equation, which given the situation is understandable. And we are trying to keep as few people in the building as possible. Um, but that may be something I need to be looking at in the future. So, um, as, and again, I had mentioned before, uh, we do have seven people as of today um, working from home remotely and they're producing content like you were saying uh, the, with Ellen's story time is a great example of that. Um, but this Thursday we should have eight set up. Um, but again, it's not an option for all of the staff. Um, I am in there every day, five days a week. Um, you know, and so are there any questions about any of that at this time? Um, other work that we've been doing at the library is promoting the census. Um, we were at uh, six, uh, in the mid 60s last time I checked. Um, we did a push and it went up four percentage points <laughs> um, when we pushed it for people to complete their census forms. We're trying to beat the 2010 um, total. So it's really, really important. Uh, public libraries are very tied uh, to the US Census and the great work that they do there. Um, we collaborate very well. Um, so we've promoted it. We will continue to do a push um, because it was supposed to be done online. Now they're mailing, but people can, you know, mail in their form, do it online or call. Um, and so that's what we've tried to push out through our social media is to, is to do that. So um, we continue to do that. Um, and, and, and thanks to the mayor, Michael Rell, for promoting it uh, at town council a week ago, I believe. Um, so that was good. Um, any questions about the census? Be counted, it's important. Tell a friend. Um, and the other thing that's been uh, sucking up a lot of time right now is budget, budget, budget. So the first budget I'd like to talk about is um, our current fiscal year budget. We are, um, as of April 21st, and I realize that's a few days old, um, we were 76% spent out. Um, we're slightly underspent. I really want this week's payroll to kind of see where we are because that's two weeks worth of, of salary um, uh, of earnings uh, there um, to see where we are. So I should have a, a, a more up to date come this Thursday once payroll's released, um, what that final figure is. Um, but, you know, uh, even though I may be underspending in certain categories like part time non union staff. Um, certain things like buying disinfectant wipes in bulk <laughs> or gloves or face masks um, or moving dramatically to the online environment. Um, those things cost money. Um, and while some of these things may be eligible for FEMA um, reimbursement, um, that would, that money you're only gonna, the, the, there's only a percentage of that. You don't get the full price of that, um, but it goes directly back to the town, which is good for the town overall, but it wouldn't be returned to the library budget. Um, but it's, it's money that we need to spend um, and it's important to purchase those kind of things um, at this given time. But, um, that's kind of where we are uh, with the current fiscal year budget. So does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah. So no. we were right on track <laughs> and then it changed. <laughs> um, so our proposed budget, um, the proposed town budget was posted online, I believe today. Mm -hmm. um, and so look at the library's um, chapters. I like to call it the work of art. Um, this year, it's a beautiful teal color, the charts. Um, and our, we are asking the proposed library budget is, uh, is $2,061,421. And that represents a $37,487 increase from the current year budget. 
So it's an increase of like 37.5. Um, or approximately a 1.85% increase. Um, and primarily that's health insurance and pension costs. I believe workers comp ticked up a bit. Um, and, and that's kind of where we are. We will be posting the budget, the town's budget on the library's website uh, tomorrow to help further promote, especially given uh, my reach might be a little bit further than Gary's reach on I don't know how many people go to the town's website. I don't want to brag, but I think the library's website's more interesting, but it's neither here nor there. We're recording this, right? So I- But you waited, for, you waited for Gary to leave. Oh, he look, he's good. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we want to make sure everybody, as possible, knows about the budget. That he we heard you. No, oh, and actually, he's back. Actually, I didn't. I just heard you waited for Gary to leave, and then I went back. <laughs> I'm in between two meetings right now, so. Nothing, nothing. Yeah. I guess I'll just wait to find out. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so those, uh, but that, that's what um, will, the, st the presentation will be on May 7th, uh, but that's currently what's in the budget book. Um, but it's again, a 37.5 increase from current year or, or approximately a 1.85% increase. And that's primarily health insurance and pension costs and like workers comp ticked up a little bit. Um, so those are costs that I can't control. Yes, Amy. Um, what do you know off the top of your head, what health insurance percentage you used? Because it seemed like they were talking about 13% that it might've dropped to 9%. So I'm just wondering, or 10%, there was, I don't know if Gary's still here. There, there's been a lot of movement with the health insurance. And I'm wondering if your numbers are what the town's now using. I use the numbers that Mike O'Neill gave to me from the finance department. Gary, were those numbers uh, 13 or 13.5 or less? So the calculated number that the town side is using is 13 and a half, but we, all right, I'll explain it like this. The overall between town and board of ed, which includes the library is 13 and a half percent. That's what the total increase is. On the town side, and I'm sorry, Brooke, I, I'll, um, I'll see if I can reach Mike either tonight, if not, we'll confirm tomorrow. But on the town side, we then take the 13 and a half and we go um, employee by employee and we adjust it based off of uh, how many, uh, how many, if it's a family or a single or two household. Um, and so we are able to then adjust that 13 and a half percent downward based off of, um, based off of what's there. There was also a credit that was provided to town and board of ed based off of um you know pro and con of what's going on with covid silver lining because fewer people have been able to get in for doctor's appointments or for elective surgeries um, the overall uh costs have come down so there's a temporary savings the reason why i'm saying it's temporary as soon as covid starts to ebb um, those individuals are going to have the surgeries that they've pushed off. They're going to seek the medical treatment that they, uh, that they didn't have. So, but we do get a credit in this particular year. So once we applied that, that actually dropped the number from 13 and a half percent. I don't know on the library side, I know total town side, which I believe includes you, Brooke. Um, it's like 8.83 or 9%. Okay. If that helps. Does that answer your question, Amy? Because I don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, right. So when the town council is looking um, to cut budgets and they see that your budget shows 13%, but now we're talking about 9%, there may be a little play in there to trim the budget. That's what I was, that's what I was trying to think, you know, think about. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions about the proposed budget at all? Have we have we gotten any guidance in terms of? I mean, that was. Oh, you're. Can you repeat that, Martha? Ha, have we gotten any feedback on the on that so far, or we're going to wait until the budget hearing? Yeah, I, I, me, Gary, and Michael Rell spoke briefly, um, and 
I, we didn't have final numbers even then. Um, and so, and that was last week. Um, so I, you know, I think town council has just seen the budget today. Is that correct, Gary? Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Monday, Monday. I apologize. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is. Um, <laughs> and so it was Monday. Um, so they're seeing it for the first time. So I haven't heard anything, you know, further, um, you know, for guidance. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I mean, and, you know, I guess this is what we all know, uh, you know, the increases really health insurance, everything else as we looked at the budget was, um, was, was trimmed or maintained. And this is the same that we've done year after year after year after year. You've always, you, um, you, you are so conscientious about your spending, Brooke. And, um, and I think, what's you know what's sticking with me in terms of moving forward is how vital our library will be as we as we deal with this crisis as the doors open as people either return to work or are unable to return to work as you said there is no more um it, it is one of the most important resources any community has mm -hmm. and you, we'll see our circulation go up our usage go up all of those things exactly because of what's going on so right Right. And that grant that we put in for to help people guide through the unemployment <laughs> um, to get to get jobs is, uh, although that was just, you know, seed money and it was a joint grant with Food Share and, and the Keene Foundation, if they're successful in getting that few thousand dollars to get that position started, that will just become so mm -hmm. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. That's like let that person in the door right now <laughs> to help. Um, right. It becomes so, so key. Um, and so I'm kind of uh, looking to see, I, I haven't heard, um, so I need to follow up with that, but um, okay. that'll be very interesting. Yeah. Right. Thank so you. just to reiterate what Martha and Brooke have both been saying, other than the health insurance increase, the budget is flat. I mean, Brooke, Brooke kept it flat. So I think that's a really important thing to know and to remember that the increase of 1.85 is strictly due to health insurance and um, pension. It is, it's not due to any other factor. Um, so, so thank you for, for doing that, Brooke, as Marco said, you've done that year after year. So yeah, we appreciate your efforts. Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> um, and that includes a, a, a half a position that we had eliminated and that was a union position, it was vacant. Um, and we had eliminated that, and that's before, you know, we've submitted a proposed budget. So we're down actually half a position, which, you know, in February, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else, Brooke, before we go into the friends ask? Not unless you guys have questions. Any questions for Brooke? Okay. Thank you. All right, so then um, you have a friend's ask um, for the summer reading program, Brooke. Yeah, so I'm looking to ask the friends, um, to ask, um, first I'm asking the library board if it's okay if I ask the friends of the library um, for $6,000 um, for summer reading program for 2020. Um, and that would be to do, um, we, we do, uh, you know, promotion of the event, we would do online programming. Uh, last year we had asked for $13,000. So I'm actually cutting the request in half um, because we're not going to be doing in-house programming for the foreseeable future. Um, and uh, we, one of, um, we do spend at least two or $3,000 just on books as prizes or reading incentives, whatever you wanna call them. And we still think that's very, very important. Um, and we'd like to use other money for, um, other than marketing and promotion, is for online programming that we might be able to deliver instead of in-house. Um, because we don't anticipate social distancing ending anytime soon. Um, and so I, I, we did not want to put in for the full amount that we, you know, which is over, has been consistently about $10,000, if not more, 
And last year we asked for $13,000, which they so generously gave. So we would um, like to ask for, you know, a, a different amount for that, knowing that we need to do different types of programming um, and to produce that or um, to purchase that type of program. So that's, uh, I, I, that's what I'm requesting. Okay, so the motion on the table is to approve for the library director to ask for $6,000 from the Friends of the Weathershield Library for this year's summer reading program. Is there a motion and a second? I motion, Hannah. Hannah, motion, is there a second? A second. This is okay, Is there any just further discussion or questions on that? Okay, given our virtual environment, we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, Martha? Uh, aye. <laughs> George? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Terry? Aye. Lila? Aye. Lori? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. So motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, friends. <laughs> yes, thank you thank indeed. You. Yes, thank you, friends. Yes. All right, so Brooke, you had another um, ask for showman? Yeah, so the other ask is for showman. So we um, have about $30,000 withdrawn from showman. So that's already out of the Charles Schwab account. Um, and so we've done ask over the last few years, and I've asked for some things, but not haven't spent all of the money. And so I would like to ask for 15, to be able to spend $15,000 on online resources. Um, and again, I can't actually, um, showman money is restricted to um, adult resources. So I can't spend it on say tumble books, but I could spend it on um, creative bug or um, hoopla. And so, you know, I, I, but there's certain categories. I cannot spend it on children, like children's kind of stuff. And so okay. consumer reports would be okay. Um, but we're spending so much money so quickly um, that I would like to have the flexibility to be able to utilize up. And I believe my ask was up to $15,000. Yes, it is. Yep. To $15,000. Um, and so, uh, and that would only spend half of it. Um, of what we've withdrawn. And so I would still have more money in the future to spend knowing that come this June, um, we base any withdrawals off the June 30th statement. And um, it just dropped on the March statement. I don't have the April statement, but the March statement dropped $20,000. Um, and that's just the showman. So we're below 300, we're at 292 as of March 31st, and I suspect it's gotten worse. Um, so it would be irresponsible to ask for anything, I'm guessing, based on the June 30th statement. I could be wrong, the markets could recover, but I, we, there's no crystal ball. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing we're not gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to ask by policy yeah, uh, for right. to, to withdraw any amount, to make a recommendation of any amount to withdraw in, Ju in July um, uh, based on the June 30th statement. Um, and our other account for Charles Schwab dropped $25,000. And so, you know, and at some point I'll email those statements off to all of you. Um, and so we, it wasn't going to be in a materials packet. Um, so, uh, you know, we're hoping that you know, those, those funds recover. Um, but, you know, it's the market. It is what it is. Lila, right. did you have a question? Cause your hands raised. Oh yes. yes. I can see your hand. It's blue. <laughs> I know. It's cool. Huh? Um, so this, so you're asking to spend 15 of the 30 that we already have out. Yes. So when we approve that, or when we made that ask, did we, um, tie it to anything no so mm -hmm. there's two things that have to take place for showmen is the first like in the summertime based on the june 30 statement the board votes on the amount to withdraw 
Okay. But no decision is made at that time on what to spend it on. Okay. And that's what we're doing now. And now then I have to come to the board and ask permission to spend it on, on something. Uh, and so I'm asking to spend it on online resources. Got it. Um, here primarily towards adults. I right. don't know if Got we can be that specific. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. yeah. Is that Thank answer you. your question? No, it does. Thank okay. you. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the utilization of up to $15,000 from showman funds for online resources? So moved. This is is there a second, Martha? Second. second. Okay, great. Um, is there any further discussion? All right, once again, by roll call, Martha? Aye. George? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Terry? Aye. Lila? Aye. Lori? Aye. I am an aye as well. All right, thank you. Motion passes. Okay, um, that was our agenda. Um, so again, just by way of reminder, um, the budget hearing Monday, May 4th, um, Brooke will send out information that starts at seven o'clock with the presentations on the town and the Board of Ed, um, and then the public comment. Um, there's two rounds of public comment, if I recall correctly, and unlike usual meetings, um, the public comments are 10 minutes the first session and then 10 minutes again the se second session up to um, those amounts so um, so keep that in mind and then again of course the Thursday May 7th which is at six o'clock when, when Brooke formally presents the library budget to the town council so and um, just a reminder to let her know by the end of this week if not sooner if you're able to attend so we can make sure that you get the actual invite to that meeting all right, um, with that, I think we are good at 7.48. Oh, um, record. Um, Doreen, Brooke, anything I, else? Doreen, I just wanted to say that I did receive an email from Mary Fraser. She was not able to get into the meeting. Oh. Uh, okay. So unfortunately, I just saw that just now. Okay, all right, very good, we'll note that. Okay. All right, very good. Then is there a motion to adjourn? A motion. All right, Hannah and Martha. Um, I don't think I have to do a roll call for this one, Brooke. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Well, I can. All right, motion to adjourn. So, Martha? Aye. George? Uh, aye. <laughs> no. Hannah? Aye. Terry? Aye. Lila? Aye. Lori? Aye. I'm an aye as well. All right, thank you all so much. We are adjourned. Thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the 4th and the 7th. Thank you. Nice, yeah. nice, nice to see you, Good Take care. Good to see you guys. Bye-bye. I know. Bye. 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 <laughs>